start. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm talking to Alex Gaswine, who is a, a colorist for, uh, for Technicolor. Um, so, Alex, if you don't mind, um, just explain it. What is a colorist? A good question. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I think there's sort of two main responsibilities for my job. Um, I work on TV shows and films. We do things for Netflix, Amazon, Disney Plus, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, various studio feature films. My responsibility is to really continue the work of the cinematographer uh, in terms of how the show looks when it goes out on air, whether on TV or in a cinema. So, um, you know, the cinematographer will have worked with their director and they will have discussed how they want their show to look, whether it's a bright and colourful comedy series or yeah. a dark and moody uh, drama, you know, or a horror film, um, and you know, there's different looks that inherently go with the different types of show. Yeah. So um, much of that will have been decided on set, when, in terms of how the cinematographers lit um, the sets or yeah, sure. wherever they're filming, um, and they will have worked with production designers, costume designers, and so on, and all of that feeds into how the show looks, um, and um, when the show comes to me, it's been edited, but, um, you know, there's been no visual effects work happen, happened so far. And, um, you know, there may have been, you know, if they were shooting outside, you know, and you can imagine what, you know, particularly in England, the sense. weather can be very <laughs> unpredictable. <laughs> so, you know, you know, many, many productions want to shoot in the summer when, when the days are longer, but of yeah. course you might have a sunny, bright, sunny day one day and then it could be raining or overcast and miserable the next yeah. and sometimes shots within the scene may have been shot over several days and then the editors cut them together and they don't match because the weather's changed or, or whatever so um, to perform the magic that uh, so part of my yeah exactly so part of my role is to make it all look like it's all of the same thing you know it's all all looks and feels the same way um, so part of it is a sort of technical um, job to match everything together. Um, the other aspect is just is just how it looks. So you know, um, depending on the cinematographer, they may have you know lit a scene very blue or lit it very dark and moody. But then maybe they want to tweak things or adjust things. Um, you know, when it comes to me. Yeah. So I. I use a system called Baselight, um, which is a color correction system. It's a little bit like Photoshop, but for moving images. Uh, and I can make things brighter, darker, more contrast, less. Um, I can make things warmer or cooler. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it maybe it was an overcast, uh, drizzly day. Um, the images they've captured might look quite flat. So often the director or cinematographer will say, oh, could you just give it a bit more contrast, give it a bit more pop, something to lift it out a bit more. Right. So we can add some contrast, lift the highlights, yeah. make, make the shadows a bit deeper, just to make it a richer image, something that's going to be pleasing to look at. And then we can, you know, if it's a comedy, maybe we're adding some colour in, boosting the saturation, you know, making the, maybe it's a Hollywood film where you want the lead actor or actress to look really, um, fabulous, so you can <laughs> make their skin tones really lovely and luminous. Yeah. Maybe make the sky around them really nice, rich blue colour, for example. Uh, we might even, if it is a grey, miserable day, maybe we even replace the sky with something a bit, you know, fluffy white clouds and, oh, and right. so on. Um, but that, that's more of a, a more sort of extreme adjustment. But, um, yeah, you know, that's the sort of typical work that I Right. And, then, and we can get into more specific things like um, often, um, you know, where, the, where there's a show where there's one one main lead actor, you know, often you watch a TV series where it's really, really the focus is on, the, you know, the one person and, yeah. uh, you know, they often want them to look their best. So maybe it's, you know, they want to give a bit more light to the eyes or lift their face out a bit more. Maybe it's a dark scene, but they don't want the, the actor to be too dark. So yeah. then we can do more specific adjustments on different parts of the frame just to make them lighter or darker. Um, so you so you're drawing the 
audience's eye to part of the frame you want to look at. Right, okay. So, well, it sounds like there's a huge, <laughs> massive uh, yeah. variety of, of stuff that you do on a day to day basis. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm now going to ask you to name drop. Uh, tell me what sort of um, productions, TV, film you've sure. involved in. Uh, recent ones have been things like His Dark Materials, the BBC. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a really fun project because the you know there's lots of visual effects work. You know there's all these um, CG creatures involved that you know the visual effects team are making, and then we make them look um, as good as we can. Um, I've just finished a film called A Boy Called Christmas, which um, is a Netflix film, which mm -hmm. will actually be out next Christmas, um, based on a, a book by Matt Haig. Um, last year I worked on a film called The Two Popes, which oh, yeah. was an Anthony Hopkins film, from, again from Netflix. I, and that's actually what we're doing more and more is feature films, but on streaming services. Right. Okay. Um, we've got some stuff coming up this year for Disney Plus. Um, so a couple of nice big projects for them. And I do a lot of TV series shows like Endeavour um, mm -hmm. as well, you know, for ITV. Yeah. Um, trying to think of some others. Let me think. I did a show called Little Birds for Sky recently, and The Trip again for Sky. Oh, right. with, uh, Steve Coogan and Rob Brydon, you know, where they yes. travel around different countries yeah. and eating nice food in posh <laughs> restaurants and doing silly impressions of. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> of um, but, but, you know, quite a range of projects, and they all have yeah. their own um, different styles and looks. So, you know, sometimes people say to me, you know, do you have a particular style, a particular look that you always go to? But you can't really do that. It's, you know, you really have to adjust the work you do to the type of the show. So, so the trip, it's all about, you know, traveling to beautiful parts of Spain or Italy, for example, yeah. um, making that the countryside look beautiful and rich and colorful and vibrant. Um, something like His Dark Materials is a little different because, you know, it's a bit more moody and dark and there's a lot of, um, very ominous um, scenes. Yeah, there are some very it's... ominous characters and uh, yeah, and exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So, so yeah, right. So you, you you've done quite um, a, a variety. I mean, what would you say is um, is the best part of, of of your job? I think apart from yeah, seeing every film before the, before actually. Well, I, I mean, I was going to say that it, it is it is exciting when you get to watch a first cut of an episode of something like His Dark Materials where there's where there's a lot of excitement about a show and you know you're reading stuff in the you know in the newspaper or whatever about upcoming productions and then you get to see a first version of it maybe it hasn't got any of the visual effects work in but you get to sort of see you know that you get to see the sets and you're starting to get a feel for the show yeah. but I think working with interesting directors interesting cinematographers, you know, people that you may have, you, you, you may have followed their work for years before. And then when you get to sit down in a room with them and, uh, and work with them and yeah. um, that, that's, I think the most exciting part. And also, you know, when you finish a film and then it gets shown in a cinema and you get to sit down and watch it with an audience, obviously right now it's, well, it's not really the case, but in a normal situation, uh, you know, sitting down in a in a cinema and, in, and watching a film that you've worked on with a with a crowd of people is, yeah, is yeah. very rewarding. Yeah, I imagine. So, if you could just tell me a bit about how you uh, got to where you are, um, and then kind of tie that in with what you would advise any of the pupils at school, um, mm -hmm. kind of GCSE level, to um, if they wanted to get, kind of go down quite a creative. A path like you, like you have. Yeah. Well, I I think I always knew from quite a young age that I wanted to work in film or TV in one way or another. I wasn't exactly sure what, but I knew that I was really interested in visual effects. I always wanted to work for Industrial Light and Magic, who did Star Wars, and right. you know, um, you know <laughs> I, I love films like that, Terminator Two, and so sure. on. And I I knew that I was interested in that. You know, you know, part of the sort of film and TV world, right. um, and then I uh, and I always, you know, art art was what I was always into at school. You know, whether it was drawing or painting or mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and then I went on to do a degree in graphic design, um, okay. and 
as part of that, did a lot of photography at the time, uh, shooting on film, and then we had dark rooms and a process to film. And, um, you know, that, that taught me about exposure and how to light for, yeah, you know, yeah. for, for stills photography. Um, and I also, at that time, learned programs like Photoshop um, and Illustrator. So, you know, with Photoshop, being able to scan in images and then manipulate them and change yeah. the colors and, you know, a similar sort of mindset to what I do now, just with still images. Sure. Um, and then after I graduated, I went on to do a master's in film because by that time I'd realized that I knew I wanted to work in film in some way, but wasn't yeah. exactly sure, you know, maybe I wanted to direct or be a cinematographer or something. But, and at that time to be honest, I didn't really know what a colorist like me, you know, was. Um, yeah. And it was only really doing my masters and we would shoot short films and again, shooting on film at that point. Yeah. Digital, digital video photography wasn't as big as it is now. Yeah. Um, so you'd, shoot on film, send it off to the lab. Um, and so you had to sort of capture it all in camera, really, at that point, you know, in, so you send it off to a laboratory, they process the film, then you get it back and you just right. hope that you had it all in focus and that you sure. yeah. got enough light and so on. But there was a certain amount you could do when you came to editing the films, you could, mm -hmm. um, in the editing software we had, there were colour correction controls where you could, you know, drag sliders to make things lighter or darker. Mm -hmm. So, oh, okay, you can do, you can do adjustments after the fact and sort of fix the mistakes you made on set. Right. So that's, that's really how I learnt about the job I do. Yeah. Um, but in terms of actually getting work in my role, um, you can't really just walk into it as, a, you know, you don't just graduate and become a colorist. Okay. You sort of have to earn your stripes, as it were, you know, making your way through the ranks in a, in a post-production facility. So I, I applied for a job as a runner at a company called Pepper, um, based in Soho in central London, um, where really the, the main role is making for teas and coffees, yeah, and, uh, getting lunch orders for the clients. <laughs> yeah, and because a big part of my, uh, the industry I'm in, you know, we work with all these different creative people. They sit in a room with us for maybe 10 hours a day and it's, it can be quite intense. Yeah. The, runner's, the runner's job is to make everybody feel comfortable and yeah, you know, <laughs> top, topped up with teas and coffees. Yeah. Um, but, it, but, as, but, you know, um, that role is a very good way of getting your foot in the door, um, getting to know clients, um, getting to know the creative people who work for the company. Yeah. You know, I was taken under the wing of some colorists who were there and they, you know, gave me more and more responsibilities. Um, after a year or two, I was able to move up to be an assistant colorist where, um, you know, I'd help set set projects up you know i'd um build timelines for them to work on make sure that you know they had everything they needed for their day and you know you gradually get to work on more and more interesting shows you know short films and music videos to begin yeah. with and then some adverts and then you sort of work your way up in the films yeah yeah right. and and then so then i've i've since then i've moved to a few other different companies, but all within the Soho area of central London, where really that's, that's the real hub of most of the work. Yeah, no, that's, that's true. So um, in terms of um, giving advice to, to people who are kind of 14, 15, 16, and they're kind of thinking yeah. of the, the, the full direction. Now you've already said you can't just become a, a colorist like that, you've got to earn your stripes. Yeah. But what would you recommend as, um, as a possible pathway for, for someone to follow? Uh, through school and then college, university. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I mean, we, we have some runners, by the way, who join us at age 18, for example, they come straight out of school and come straight into being a runner because they know that they want to work in that industry and maybe want to sidestep the, um, the degree route and yeah. just sort of learn their way up that way. Um, I think, you know, 15, 16 years old, I as I said to you before, I, I didn't know exactly which, what role I wanted specifically in the industry. I just knew I wanted to be in it in one way or another. And you find that a lot of people sort of um, change their mindset as they sort of, you know, 
we get runners come in, they might run a runner might come and sit in with me and learn about what I do and I show them. And then some will go, yeah, well, that really excites me. And some might go, actually, that's not quite for me, but maybe sound is more my thing or, um, you know, because we have a sound department as well. Yeah, or yeah. maybe, or maybe producing is more. Thing. So I think, I think just getting a job, any job you can for a company. Again, Central London is sort of the place to be in the UK, yes. um, so that you can kind of, you, you know, as a runner or if you work in reception, you can kind of just get a feel for what goes on and whether it's the right kind of job for you. Um, and as you work your way up and as you make yourself known to people, you can kind of try out different things. And, um, we, you know, we've had training programs in the past so people can try working in all the different departments yes. just to see what they what they like. But I think, you know, if you're a 15, 16 year old listening to this now, I think I'd say try and get your hands on, whether it's Photoshop or, you know, a free bit of software that lets you, you know, there's lots of software that lets you import your photos and edit them, you know, or even on your on your phone, you, there's apps yeah. that let you, you know, play with the colours and oh yeah, and apply filters yeah. and things. But you, you know, you can kind of get a sense of, you know, um, you know what kind of things you can do with images, and yeah. you know, there's even there's even editing software. There's you, there's actually a, a colour correction system called Resolve. That there's a free version of that that you can download, and then you can import your video and play around with the images and so we were practicing and having having, having yeah. it in the go. I mean yeah. if there if there are, uh, there are pupils if there are kids who are thinking about the more academic route rather than the um, working as a runner. I mean what, what sort of yeah. courses would you because obviously obviously I mean I would I would imagine it's going to be kind of like the I suppose digital media, I mm -hmm. media, art, the kind of the design um, and kind of graphic design route is, is that right? Yeah, I mean, I did graphic design um, and, you know, there there were elements that were very closely related what, to what I do now. And there were others, other elements of it, for example, typography or production design that went in with it, which weren't specifically related. But I think they all helped me with my understanding of colour and how, you know, um, how colour can be used in different ways to affect your mood or, you know. Uh, you know, in product design, bright, bright, colourful. Of course, yeah. To catch people's eye. So, um, I, I think that, and, and but there are more specific sort of digital media courses. You know, um, you know, um, animation courses. Um, uh, there are more specific sort of illustration courses or photography courses, yeah. or even um, just going right into some kind of film degree. Um, as well and uh, you know some of those are quite um, broad uh, again the masters that I did was quite broad in its scope so it covered directing lighting sound acting mm -hmm. um, so you kind of really got a feel for the different you know roles yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think really with my role um, I think just having it, opening your eyes to as much sort of visual, um, you know, anything interesting visually is, is yeah, useful. Yeah. You know, I'm, ju I'm just looking at the, the paintings behind you, you know, um, you know, going to an art gallery and, and looking at how a, a painter, you know, creates their right. images. All of that is useful. So um, I, I, I think th th there aren't too I Actually, I think the London Film School does have a, a a um, a course that does cover my role right. more specifically. There there aren't a huge number of colleges that sort of you know teach you to be a colorist, but they sort of um, no. It's I mean it's like you say you um, stripes so maybe go into something that is equally creative. So it could be art, it could be yeah. photography, it could be eye media, um, yeah. and then see what opportunities kind of come up. But I suppose from what you said is that. It's kind of concentrated in London, perhaps more the uh, the mostly. I mean, you know, there is you know, there's um, smaller sort of industry in Bristol, Manchester, Leeds, for example, up in Glasgow as well. Um, yeah. But but London's sort of where most of the focus is. Um, 
So, yeah, I, th I think you know, that my colleagues have, have come from a real range of backgrounds. Some of them left school straight away and went into shooting documentaries. Right. And then, I, you know, got a feel for, you know, capturing images themselves and then found that being on set wasn't, um, you know, or out on location wasn't quite their thing. But, you know, being in a, you know, working on a computer was more their right. thing. So, so everybody's sort of come from slightly different mm -hmm. directions. But I think if you can find any kind of uh, degree or course that teaches you about visual language, yeah. Yeah, is going to be useful. Right. Okay, Alex, that's been absolutely fascinating. So thanks ever so much no for problem. all of that. And I'm, I'm sure once this is shown in school, there'll be 85 million questions being fired at me. That, uh, we'll Feel be free to fire so, them my way. Right. Okay, that's fantastic. Thanks a lot for your time. No problem. My pleasure. Cheers. Nice to talk to you. Bye bye. I think that's. Just check that stop recording.